spreadsheet data is everywhere. You can find it in Excel sheets as well as when downloading business data from our website. The package encoding slash CSV from the Go Standard Library can help you processing that data and produce statistics, reports or other kinds of output from it. Here is how. Let's assume we work as a stationary distributor. Every evening, we receive a spreadsheet containing the orders of the day for review. The data looks like this. We are interested in some information that is not directly contained in the data. Especially, we want to know the total price for each order, the total sales volume, and the number of ball pens sold. As we get a new copy every day, Creating formulas within the spreadsheet is not an option. Instead, we decide to write a small tool to do the calculations for us. Also, the tool shall add the result to the table and write a new spreadsheet file. Let's dive into the Go code. We start by declaring a main package and a main function. In main, we sketch out our program flow. Read the CSV file, calculate the desired numbers and write the results to a new CSV file. Our first step is to export the spreadsheet data to CSV. To make things a bit more complicated, we export the data with a semicolon as the column separator. Our data now looks like this. We can see a header row and data rows, with data separated by semicolons. To read this data, we first open the file for reading using os.open. If the file cannot be opened, os.open returns an error that we need to handle. Usually, we would return the error to the caller and handle all errors in function main. However, this is just a small command line tool, and so we use log.fatal instead, in order to write the error message to the terminal and exit immediately. After this point, the file has been opened successfully, and we want to ensure that it gets closed when no longer needed. So we add a deferred call to f.close. To read in the CSV data, we create a new CSV reader that reads from the input file. The CSV reader is a way of the CSV data format. It separates the input stream into rows and columns and returns a slice of slices of strings. We can even adjust the reader to recognize a semicolon rather than a comma as the column separator. Again, we check for any error, and finally we can return the rows. To process the data, we loop over the rows and read from or write to each row slice as needed. The for range loop iterates over the outer slice and yields the index of each element of the slice. The first row is the header row. Here, we only want to add a new header for the column that holds the total prices. From the next row onwards, we calculate the total price, sum up all prices and count the number of ball pens being ordered. This is fairly straightforward, as we know the indexes of the item name, the unit price and the quantity. The only difficulty is that all columns are string values, but we need the price and quantity values as numeric values. Another obstacle we are facing here is that the prices are floating point values, but for financial calculations we want to use precise integer calculations only. Luckily, the strings and strconf packages have got us covered. First, we remove the decimal point from the price using strings.replace, and then we can convert the strings to integers using strconf.a2i. As these operations can fail, we have to ensure to handle all errors. After doing our calculations, we need to turn the results back into a floating point value represented as a string. For this, we write a little helper function that calculates the integer part and the fractional part from the result and writes both values, separated by a decimal point, into a string using fmt.sprintf. Now we can append the total price to each row and write the overall sum of all orders into a new row as well as the number of ball pens being ordered. Finally, we write the result to a new file using os.create and a CSV writer 
that knows how to turn the slice of slices of strings back into a proper CSV file. Note that we do not set the separator to a semicolon here, as we rather want to get a standard CSV format this time. When running this code, the output file should look like this. And we can open it in our spreadsheet app or in a CSV viewer to get a nicely formatted table. Here we can see our new totals column, as well as the two new rows that show the overall sum and the number of ball pens ordered. You can do a lot more with the spreadsheet data. Try, for example, handling orders with multiple items, or add columns like discount, base price, or shipping cost per order, and calculate new total prices as well as your revenue from that. Thank you for watching this Crash Course episode. I hope you enjoyed it. See the channel for more episodes or visit my blog at AppliedGo.net or my Go courses site at AppliedGo.com. Happy coding!